welcome to the Great Retirement Debate. Boy, we have a good episode today. What are we talking about, Jeff? Uh, today, we're going to ask the question, should I use a Roth IRA to save for college education? That's pretty good. A lot of tax-free money there. A lot of tax-free money. So before we get into the should, let's talk about potentially some of the options that people well, have. What people are doing now. Yeah. So there, there are a lot of different ways. I think the most common way that people who are intentionally saving for college today would do so is with a 529 plan account. So 529 plans, for those who aren't aware, are special vehicles, uh, primarily for higher education purposes. It used to be exclusively, and then some recent changes now allow a, a limited amount of those dollars to be used for K through 12 education each year, also a limited amount to be used over the course of a lifetime to pay down existing student debt. But primarily, those accounts are still used for the future expenses of higher education, so college, uh, graduate school, et cetera. The money that goes into the account at the federal level is not deductible, though many states do offer a tax deduction at the state level. Uh, it grows tax deferred, kind of like an IRA or Roth IRA while it's in there. And then later on when distributions occur, if those distributions are used for qualified education expenses, so uh, tuition, room and board if someone is at least half time, uh, it could be even be for computers or even internet costs today, then those dollars are tax free, kind of like a Roth IRA. So there's a lot of benefits to the 529 plan. But while it is the probably the most popular way to save. It's not the only way. Some people still save in taxable accounts, uh, even under a child's name, like an UTMA or an UGMA right. type of an account. Uh, also, another way to do so would even be through Roth IRAs. All right. There's one thing. You wrote an article on this, I'd say about a year or two ago, about the problem with, well, or opportunity. <laughs> uh, there was a word you used. I forget you used, the word you used to describe the super f uh, 529. Oh, the dynasty 529. Right, 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 yes, right. Yes. So what's the opportunity slash problem? Yeah, so I mean, the, the, the biggest thing with a, a 529 plan is that you have the ability to change the recipient of those dollars over time. So let's say that uh, you have three kids and one of them ends up not going to college or, God forbid, Ed gets a scholarship. I know, the or, horror. I know. Then... You well, they're a dropout like Bill Gates. There you go, guys. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a terrible <laughs> mistake that was. Well, you take those dollars and you can actually just shift them to another individual. And that's different than most other tax-deferred accounts, right? Like you can't take an HSA that right. belongs to you and then Health magically account, make yeah. it someone else's. You can't do the same with an IRA, right? The I in IRA is individual. It's yours. It's yours for life. Right. The only way to get it from you to someone else is to die, uh, which is not good planning. So, and I remember the media picked up on your term then. They said, wow, this is great. But is it great? Uh, you know, it depends on what you want. Uh, the Dynasty 529 plan can expand and, uh, it, 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 you know, will those dollars actually be used for That's that purpose? It. You know, ultimately, it's very hard to force someone in the future to use those dollars for education. But if we're talking about, let's say, for your child or for your grandchild and you're still living, you have some control over that then you can dictate, you can still be the owner of a 529 plan. And as long as you're here, you can decide how those funds can be used. I've even seen some seniors going back to <laughs> school to That's use right. up all the excess dollars. Yeah, lots of different ways you can do that. There, You can use it for vocational school. So some people go back and want to be a chef, you know, yeah. want to learn more about cooking. Uh, lots of different uses for the 529 plan. But let's, let's start to break down. So the ultimate question for today is, should you use a Roth IRA for funding of education expenses? And look, the answer to 99% to of the debates that we have here, Ed, is it depends. Right. Right. Like that's almost the answer to every question we always ask. But the reality is here, if there's an opportunity to use a Roth IRA and have dollars come out tax free for education, there's not a whole lot of downside I know. to using a Roth to do so. Even though it's not the most popular vehicle, it actually has several advantages over a 529 plan. So, you know, one of the biggest advantages is that a 529 plan is considered, at least if it's owned by a parent or the student, it's considered an asset on the FAFSA form. That's the free application for student aid or for federal student aid. And um, that, you know, that can limit if you have enough money, if you do a good enough job saving for your child's education inside a 529 And you'll plan. need that money. That's right. Then you can be <laughs> sure that you're going to need that money because it reduces the opportunity uh, for, for the school or for the federal government to come in and subsidize that cost. 
By contrast, money inside a Roth IRA, or really any retirement account, is actually excluded as an asset on the FAFSA form. It doesn't, you can have a, a million dollars, two million, a billion dollars in a Roth IRA. There's no impact on college aid eligibility with the Roth. Now, the big thing that people point out is yes, but with a 529 plan, everything is tax-free if you use it for qualified education. But in many cases, the Roth IRA dollars can also be taxed, right? Right, right, right. You can get it all out. And that's the reason, I mean, the idea of the time for 529s was great. But what happened is the people that used it most, like in your dynasty example, got too much money in there. Mm -hmm. Even Congress has recognized this and secured 2.0. Maybe some congressmen had these issues. <laughs> and they created this new provision, effective now in 2024, where you could roll 529 plans over to Roth IRAs. But it's not all it's cracked up to be. There nope. are severe limitations. The account has to be open uh, 15 years. Uh, the first the last five years don't count. It has to be under the name of the beneficiary. But the big limit is the overall limit of a lifetime, 35000 And that's so, one of the few numbers in the entire bill that wasn't adjusted for inflation going forward. Right. And so even that, some people, oh, you have a small account. That's not bad. But you can't even do the 35000 all in one year. It's limited to the IRA contribution amount, the Roth IRA contribution amount, which right now the most might be 7000 So it'd take you five years to use that. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, but even Congress realized there was too much money building up in these accounts. This didn't do much. It, it recognized the problem, but didn't do much to fix it. Because So let's, let's talk about, you know, in a Roth IRA, if the, if the big question is, right, hey, if I put this money in a 529 plan, then I can take it out and use it regardless of the, of the time, tax and penalty free, as long, like, it does, there's no one year, there's no waiting till 59 and a half, it's just, whatever the account is, as however long it's been there, as long right. as it's used for education, it's tax and penalty free. And that's often the, t the thing that people point to when they say, well, that's why I'm using a 529 plan. But there's a lot of money that can come out of a Roth tax and penalty that's free, right? That's right, that's right. All right, so let's talk about that. What yeah. are, well, first of all, the Roth has none of the limitations we all talked about with the 529, nothing. Mm -hmm. You could take the money out and bet it on a horse if you want. That's right. Uh, generally tax-free if you generally have the five years and 59 and a half. And for most people that are you setting these up for kids in college, a lot of them are past 59 and a half, but even if they're not. Uh, Roth IRAs have very favorable distribution rules, what we call ordering rules. Mm -hmm. The contributions, the original contributions you might have made uh, annually. So this year, like the $7,000 yeah, right. you can put in. Yep. That will always, always come out tax and penalty free. What if I need it a year later? It doesn't, it doesn't even matter. What if I need at, it five years later? Yeah, at any time. What if it's for any for, reason? So I can go play anytime, video games. Any reason, uh, any video game. All right. uh, <laughs> uh, that's the contributions. And the same thing can mostly be said about the conversion layer. That might be the bigger dollars. That mm -hmm. will always come out tax-free because that those, the, those funds were taxed when they were converted. Not maybe all penalty-free depending on when you're distributing it. So that really just leaves the earnings layer. And the reason I gave the these tiers is because that's the order it comes out in. The first dollars out are deemed to come from the best position, the contributions, then conversions, and then earnings. So it's a great account to use uh, for education, but for anything. All right. So the, the, let's say for the next 10 years, I put in $7,000 a year. That's 7 into the Roth, right? Into the Roth right. IRA. That's and, and just to be clear here, a lot of times when we say the Roth, we're being equivalent about Roth IRAs and Roth 401ks, but here we're no, specifically talking about right, Roth right, IRAs. There right. are some key differences. So let's say for the next 10 years, I make my $7,000 Roth IRA contributions per year. That's 7,000 times 10 years is $70,000. You're just telling me in 10 years, no matter how old I am, no matter what purpose I use it for. So Anytime, for any reason. I could take $70,000 out. Tax and penalty free use which of course i could use for my kids education or, or anything, anything else right okay so that's pretty good but now let's say i want to send my kid to nyu which i hear is a very expensive school i know <laughs> <laughs> so let's say i want to do that and that's going to cost me i don't know what is it a hundred thousand dollars a year at i don't know i'm out of touch with i don't this. remember no, but, it was yeah. a bit <laughs> it was a lot it was enough yeah <laughs> let's just make it i know it's not that high but let's just make it a hundred thousand dollars a year i remember i was paying at the master's level <laughs> <laughs> so at a hundred thousand dollars a year hypothetically again right I've only got 10 years worth of Roth IRA contributions. Now, you said, and you made a good point, if you have five years and 59 and a half, 
then everything in your Roth IRA is always tax and penalty free. It's the golden rule. Right. Every, you can't, it's one of the few things that we could say, you can't mess it up even if you try really even hard. Even if you want, even if somebody said, but I want to pay a tax. Yeah, you can't. You can't. It's just not happening, right? Five years and 59 and a half, you can use it for anything. But not every parent is going to be 59 and a half, right? right. Not everybody is. But so conversions, we can effectively get there, right? Right. Because a conversion, while it's not as flexible as the contribution, a conversion can come out at any time tax and penalty free as long as you converted more than five years ago. Right. So, so Ed, I'm, I'm 40 years old this year. Let's say I wanted to uh, prepare for my kids going to NYU and I converted $300,000 from my IRA to my Roth IRA today. And I, my oldest will be going to college in about uh, 10 years or so, right? Nine well, then years. you're okay. So nine years from now, I could take that $300,000 out. Now, I'll be 49. Well, first the contributions uh -huh. and then the conversions, all tax and penalty free. So really, if we plan ahead, the idea that there could be a penalty really can be eliminated. Right. With, okay. Unless you, you know, dipped into the earnings before 59 and a half. And that might be the big difference then between, let's yeah. say, a 529 plan right. and a Roth, right? Right. With the 529 plan, you know, if we think about should you, well, this would be one of the counter arguments, right? If you, if you have a lot of earnings that accrue over time, and let's say you start saving when the child is young, it could be a substantial amount of earnings. Those earnings inside a 529 plan will be penalty-free and tax-free if used for education. Right. But with the Roth, you might have some trouble. The Roth may be great, but in a situation where you have excess 529 money, if uh -huh. there's a bill, I would try and use that money up first. That's a good point. All right, so let's, let's look at it a little bit differently. So far, we've talked about kind of the proactive pre-planning, which is awesome, and hopefully a lot of our listeners are, are in that stage of life. But let's say someone today is listening in and they have – Five, uh, they, they have Roth IRA money, right? Or, or they're close in years to when they're going to need this, but they won't be 59 and a half. What, what can they do to, uh, you know, to, to potentially utilize the Roth IRA, but without impacting student aid? Well, they, they can take that money out tax-free. I mean, it, it doesn't, as you just said before, the Roth IRA bypasses that. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's worth noting here, uh, you know, one, one important nuance, Ed, that I, I think a lot of people are not aware of, right, is that when it comes to the income on, like we talked about the asset of the Roth IRA on a FAFSA right. form, but there's two elements of the FAFSA form, right? There's an asset section and an income section. While the Roth IRA is not taxable, and it might be penalty free, right? If we're maybe right, right. tax and penalty free, even though it doesn't count for income for regular tax purposes, it actually will count as income on the FAFSA form. Now, FAFSA looks back two years. So basically, by the time the kid is a junior in college, you can usually take income out of the Roth without it. But if you're using a Roth IRA to pay for school, during those first two years, the freshman and sophomore year, it may pay actually to avoid it. Now, obviously not everybody has a ton of other money. So a great idea for a lot of people might be taking loans out, you know, say for a anything few years. Anything but using that money. Exactly, anything but using that money. And then you can always use the Roth IRA to help repay the loans. And I think there's actually several advantages of that. The first is that it gives you more time to build up money in the Roth, right? It's, it's, a, right. it's a few more years of earnings. Right. Another is if you're close to 59 and a half, it's two more years. You can, like if you're 57 and a half when your child goes to school, two years in, you're 59 and a half. Now everything, even the earnings are tax and penalty free. And it does one more thing, Ed. One more thing. If you take, if you have your kid take out loans in their name and you have the Roth IRA to maybe help them pay that back, what do you think it does? I don't know. I'm way. I'm waiting with bated breath. Gives you a little bit of leverage. Oh, okay. I didn't know where you were going. I was yeah. thinking tax law. You're talking about parenting. That's right, parenting. <laughs> I'm in that mode right now. Gives you a little bit of leverage. Like, listen, I will be happy to pay off these student loans if. for you if you maintain a B average or if you whatever certain conditions you as a parent want to set. C average, B average. Yeah, see how that a, works. Yeah, well, yeah. I said, listen, I'm not. Um, I'll have a reach that point. Maybe I'll change my mind once I have my yeah. kids in college. But the point is, is that you can always use those Roth dollars later on. And, you know, one more thing that does is it also if you take out loans in the student's name, at least initially for those first few years, helps build credit. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. there are very few yeah. things today that are more important than having good credit. A good credit score can actually save your child or grandchild more money over the course of their lifetime than maybe most other things that Especially you could do. Especially with a home mortgage. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so Ed, as we, we sit here and we, we think back to our discussion today and wrapping up, what are your thoughts? Would you, you know, should you use a Roth IRA as a college savings vehicle? Yes, it's a great vehicle, but as I said earlier, if you have the 529 that's too much in there, that may be the way to go. Yep. Yeah. I, I think I think that's a great way. Like if you're if you're young and you know you're going to be it, look. I'd say this, and if, also that you're a uh, uh, tax and penalty free situation in mm-hmm. the Roth. I, I think I think that's a hundred percent. If you've already got the money inside the the, the five twenty nine plan, it probably pays to use those dollars first in right. many instances because the Roth is more flexible. Right. right? Once you're fifty nine and a half and you've got your five years, you can use it for anything. But for those who are just starting out now, you know it. it the, uh, for the first time ever recently, Ed, the average age of birth for a, a woman, uh, the average age at which she gave birth in America, was north of 30 years old. Wow. And that's, that's the first time we've seen that. So more and more parents are actually going to be 59 and a half, oh, okay. either when their yeah. kids are going to school or shortly thereafter. So more and more parents are going to have the ability to use not just some, but all of their Roth dollars, tax and penalty free, to avoid having it counted as an asset. So to me... I think it's a very underused account. I don't think it should always be used, but more people than not, or, or I'd say a lot more people than do so today should give strong consideration to the well, Roth IRA. Well, that's it. Well, we started with why don't people use the Roth? I don't think they even consider it. Yeah, and that's a shame. So let us know. What do you think? Do you think the Roth IRA is a good account to use for savings for college? Let us know. You can reach out to Ed on Twitter at The Slot Report or myself at CPA Planner. We'd love to hear from you. And Ed, as always, thanks for a great discussion here on The Great Retirement Debate.